with iPods storming the market and iPhone crashing it, Sony came up with this, the iPod Killer, the competitor to the iPod Touch. Beautifully grafted, glass front and back, metal buttons, noise cancellation, and a beautiful three inch OLED touchscreen. Sony was back with a bang. Now being 2020, it's been well over 10 years since the launch in 2009. This is the Walkman NWZ X1060. Now looking at the home screen really reminds me of the Sony Ericsson's from back in the day. Uh, very simple layout. Uh, and you can even see that from the icon, it has Wi-Fi and an FM tuner. Now, unfortunately, as I'm going to show you very shortly, when you connect to the Wi-Fi, it seems great. It connects, it works, but there's not much support at all. Now, I'm guessing this is from Sony's, well, two things, I guess. Lack of support, number one, and absolute rubbish software in terms of browser, keypad and even the application for youtube was utterly utterly horrible you click on youtube and half the videos never really worked and as you can see session is completely been killed there's no more servers there support's been stopped but there you go and when i tried the web browser which is shocking you'll see me trying to type I have to press the icon to turn around its rotation and just trying to search something is just shocking. I mean, I don't even know what to try. Let's, all, let's give what, Google a try. So w, w, w dot. As you can see, I'm really, really struggling. It's been a very, very long time since I've tried these keypads. And it's just shocking. So I might as well fast forward it for you so you can turn it on bore you guys. So after the, all the sweat and tears and pain of putting that stupid damn website in, so you can see it doesn't even work. There's no support or anything. But moving on to the podcast, you try and go to the web page for the podcast and not there either. So completely useless, not even worth it. So I'm not on use it. So just let's just turn it off. Now, I do have to hand to Sony, the hardware really is beautiful, and it was, in some respects, quite ahead of its time. I mean, even this display is just gorgeous for its time. It's a beautiful OLED panel, probably not well represented across the video to you guys, but trust me when I say it's very high resolution for back then. But obviously now, it's just complete crap, but <laughs> for then, great. Good job, Sony. So moving on, we've got the FM radio, which not much more to say other than I mean, it has a poor antenna, as expected in a device this small. But with headphones, you get somewhat reception. It can be good. But with nowadays with digital uh, radio stations, it's not really something that much of a feature that uh, that's much used. But yeah, there's not much more to it. And moving on to obviously the main event is the music, and. I like, kind of like the way they attempted to try and make the Apple-esque cover flow. But it is kind of cumbersome and quite useless, so not really used either. Uh, but, I mean, as you can see, uh, they, they tried. Now, I do have to say that the audio quality is quite exceptional on this, on this device. Now, the primary reason I actually bought this of the iPod Touch back then is I actually did purchase an iPod Touch and I was quite sadly disappointed by its sound quality. Now, I'm not audiophile, but I was quite aware when my we listened through my headphones that it was quite a muddy bass, not and just too many highs. Now, I'm not sure whether it was because the iPod Touch had a really bad sound chip. The iPhones definitely were a lot, lot better. But I purchased it at a dear around 140 quid. Um, but the sound quality is really good. I mean, you can see it has a lot of options uh, with some funky surround kind of effects. Uh, my only gripe with the uh, media player, uh, now I believe this is due to our European laws, is that it wasn't very, it's still not very loud. And I've heard a lot of people online forums say that get an amplifier and it really boosts the uh, sound of the audio 
but that's literally the only gripe I have with it. Other than that, it's well built. The noise cancelling feature does work, but only with the included headphones, uh, which I no longer have, so it kind of used to feature now, but it was very good back then. And it even has the iPod-esque hold feature, so it basically you can choose to disable just the screen, or disable just and the buttons and the screen. Now I really love the buttons, very clicky, tactile, a little bit small, but they definitely get the job done. You don't want to look into your pocket trying to look at the screen, you can simply uh, skip or go back a song. So lovely, lovely feature there. Probably one in the storage, well it is 32 gigs, a lot of it's time and still plenty now. You can hold more than enough music if you wanted to. Now Sony is Sony and famous for having their own proprietary connectors, no different here. They had this silly little WM port connector, not USB, not a big deal, you can find cheap ones online but at the same time I wish it was USB, don't have to carry another cable, it is what it is. But other than that, uh, I mean would you buy one now, would you still buy a Walkman, do you still buy iPods, do you still have an iPod, let me know in the comment uh, section down below. I personally still love the idea of having a separate media device, uh, not for the fact that it has a spec sound chip, which it does, than a regular phone or whatever it is that you have, but for the simple fact that you can have it disconnected from any notifications, any calls, any messages that you might have while, say for example, you're playing at the party at your friend's house, if you still do that kind of thing, or even in your car. Um, but yeah let me know guys um, but if you like what you saw let me know down below give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down if that's your thing don't like it and definitely let me know and subscribe down below for more content